Today's video is going to be about small loop antennas. Um, a small loop antenna looks like a small loop of current, like this, and it has the particular property that it has constant current, I naught. all the way around. Um, let's say that this is in the XY plane, although we're mostly going to be operating in spherical coordinates for this whole thing. Um, first, let's begin by figuring out what its radiated fields are. As usual, we can write down the radiation integral for the magnetic vector potential which is going to be mu over 4 pi, integral over the volume that contains all the sources, um, which in this case is actually just the contour of the loop itself, um, i of r prime, e to the minus j k r minus r prime, all of these r's and r primes are vectors, all over r minus r prime d well in this case it's a contour integral so it's going to be dot dl if we do some geometry we get first of all that magnitude r minus r prime which we've talked about before <clears throat> is the square root of r squared. Remember that r here is our observation point, so let me draw that onto our original diagram. That's r. Um, so that's the point from which we are looking at this antenna and looking at its fields. Plus a squared, a is the radius of the loop. And then we have minus 2a r sine theta cosine of phi minus phi prime, where theta and phi are observation point variables, and phi prime is a source uh, coordinate. So the challenge in actually evaluating this integral is this thing. It is not very nice to evaluate. But if the radius of the loop is small, then we can use a Maclaurin series to represent e to the minus jk r minus r prime doo -doo 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 -doo, over r minus r prime. This whole thing as approximately 1 over r plus a times jk over r plus 1 over r squared times sine theta cosine of phi prime whole thing times e to the minus jk r. I'm not going to talk to you about how we did that. You can look in your textbook if you want to know what the process is to do it, but they used a Maclaurin series to convert this phase term divided by distance term into this. So then our integral becomes, there's only a phi component of the magnetic vector potential because there's only a phi component of the current. So we have a sub phi, which is equal to a, well, approximately equal to, right? Because we're using the approximation mu phi uh, i naught divided by 4 pi integral from 0 to 2 pi cosine phi prime. 1 over r plus a, all of this stuff up here. So jk over r plus 1 over r squared sine theta cosine phi prime 
e to the minus j k r d phi prime. So because of this situation, this term has only a cosine of phi prime, and this term ends up with contributions from this cosine and this cosine over here. So this one ends up having a cosine squared of phi prime. The result of this whole thing is that the magnetic vector potential, again, only has a phi component, and that phi component is equal to a squared mu i naught over 4 e to the minus j k r times j k over r plus 1 over r squared times sine theta. So look at that. This sine theta is going to be the radiation pattern term because that gives you the angle dependence. Everything else here is an amplitude term. So things like this part and these parts are going to tell you about the radiation resistance. And as we've talked about, really only this term matters, the 1 over r term in the far field, because if you look at the power radiated through a sphere that encloses this source, and then you let the radius of that source grow really big, this term can keep up with the growth in surface area, and you get the same radiated power. But this term with 1 over r squared, the amount of power contained in that drops off as the surface area of the sphere grows. So this one exists in the far field, and this one only exists in the near field. So how do we get the magnetic field and the electric field from this? 